sense that the spoons are beating out some kind of rhythm, a message, trying to tell me something. shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Sounds like a curse, all right. Somebody's clearly obsessed. Regis mentioned the place might be cursed. Can't be a coincidence. Need to look around. mirror as if someone couldn't stand to look at themselves the monster journal's author maybe no spoon you have shall say to you whatever lives here treated that literally still searching for the right spoon another spoon yep just as normal as the last one White's obsessed, a real collector, thoroughbred. None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Skeletons. Doubt they came here willingly. This have anything to do with the curse? None shall sit and dine with you at your table. It'd make sense. Right on, bit right off. Teeth all knocked out. Somebody tried to force feed him. No claw or fang marks. Probably choked to death. Broken neck, indentation in the skull's lateral surface, smacked in the head with something heavy. Actually does seem like a white's lair. Bit atypical, but still. Cauldron should be somewhere around here. Another spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last one. White's obsessed. A real collector. Thoroughbred. Table set. White who lives here is getting ready for some sort of feast. White that lives here. Definitely afflicted by a curse. Oh, 
thousands of them here. White's been a collector for years. Spoon, pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old. I'm not gonna hurt you. Wanna help? I've seen the words of the curse on the walls. Think I know how to lift it. to bring folk here, convince them to sit at the table with you, right? Well, I'm gonna be your guest now. Your willing guest. where none shall sit and dine with you at your table no spoon you have shall say to you never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror we can't use spoons no that won't work you've been looking for a spoon that would feed you but there's no such spoon we need to eat without spoons
I'll take you someplace safe. So I took her by the hand and led her here. Seemed the only sensible place for her. You did the right thing, sir. She should recover quickly here. Don't worry, sir. I shall see to everything. She is safe here and in good hands. She'll soon be back on her feet. Might actually take a while. She hadn't eaten anything in over a hundred years when I found her. Horrid. Whatever brought this about? Told me her story on the way here. Her name's Marlena. She was once the very beautiful and proud heiress to the Trastamara estate. One evening, when she was holding a banquet for friends, a beggar came to her gate seeking alms. He had a bowl and a spoon with him. He sat outside her fence and waited. I've heard of the custom. An ancient rite of hospitality that obliges one to give food and drink to such a guest lest he depart hungry. To neglect the custom is to bring great misfortune down upon oneself. Marlena didn't care a whit for the old customs. She drove the man off, saying she'd rather feed the leftovers from her feast to her dogs than to give the beggar anything. The beggar then broke his spoon, cast a curse. She was beautiful, so he said she'd never wish to look at herself in the mirror again. Since she adored feasts, he swore no one would ever wish to sit and dine with her. And as she even refused him the crumbs from her table, he swore she'd never find a spoon in the world that would sate her hunger. A harsh punishment. I imagine lifting the curse was hardly simple. Curses are tricky. They play on irony. Always gotta figure out what the catch is. Marlena had spent decades looking for a way to lift it. Transformed into a white, she stole spoons and lured folk into her home, trying each time to get them to dine with her. Didn't work. So what did? Someone had to sit down and share a meal with her, of their own free will. They had to eat without using spoons and make her look at her reflection. That's it? That was all it required? Simplest solutions are sometimes the last that come to mind. Besides, when you're a white, it's pretty damn hard to find willing human company for a feast. I imagine so. But, most importantly, it is now over. Please, don't worry. She will be in good hands here. Thanks. Gotta get back to my business now. See you soon. Tasty. Mm, so... Mm, wonderful. Thank you. I thank you. Mm, so tasty. Oh, so good. Shout, the beast! You'll smell the soiled armor.
awful pretty. It'll look great in the house. I thank you for letting me stay. I cannot remember when last I was this happy. You sure you don't feel lonely out here? I cannot say yet. Too little time has passed since you freed me of my thrall. But somehow, for now at least, I do not feel drawn to the city, to others. Visited others' homes as a white. Yes, but ever at night, when all were asleep, I went in search of... Of spoons. Remember, you can always change your mind. Decide you've lived here long enough, just say the word. I'd never wish to seem ungrateful. And I'd never want you to stay against your will. I'd never expect someone with your past to feel drawn to the kitchen. Do you fear I will cook in your home as I brood as a white? <laughs> Counting on you having slightly better taste as a human. Of that, you can be sure. I loved cooking. Even as a child, my gran was a true master in the kitchen. Her spit-roasted ox was famed throughout the land. Thought you were a lady, owned an estate. Do you mean to say a woman of my rank should have had a cook? You're right, of course. And I had the best of cooks. But I devised the dishes myself. They only prepared them. See you later. Take care, Witcher, and remember, you always have warm food awaiting your return.